All righty, good morning, and we are back with uh, Camille Gaines. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How y'all doing? We're doing good. It's a little early, right? But we're up and moving <laughs> around. Are you normally up this early, or is this something special? No, I get up pretty darn early in the morning every day. <laughs> I try just... to sleep in sometime on Saturday night. By 8 o'clock, I'm up. Oh, Saturday. by eight, on Saturday. Saturday's the sleep in day. Yeah, Saturday is the sleep in day. You know, as I got older, I just can't sleep in anymore. I just wake up and I lay there and I just feel stupid, so I get up. Yeah, that's why eight o'clock. I think when I was younger, I was able to sleep in longer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can sleep in. Oh yeah, absolutely. And but I also stayed up later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I can't stay up late either. I can't either. I can't either. All right, Camille, let's go right into you. Um, tell us um, who you are um, and your company. Tell us a little bit about your company. Let's jump right into you. Okay. Well, I'm Camille Gaines, I'm CEO of Rig on Wheels, Broker and Recruitment Services. We've been around since about 2010. So we started with the recruitment side and here recently branched off into diving into the brokerage as well. Wow. So okay. We are. Wow. That's awesome. And y'all are located. Where are y'all located at? Houston, Texas. Yeah, down in Houston. Awesome. So here, I got some. Uh, I got some great questions for you. Um, first of all, we are a huge, a huge supporter um, of women in trucking. I, I just want you to know that. Fantastic. We we are trying to get the word out. We are trying to make sure everybody understands. We need talented, smart women in this industry to make this place better and uh, and i think you fit the bill in that category and i'm very happy that you're here what what uh what made you want to push to start your own business in this much male dominated industry 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago yeah it's almost been 13 now it's coming up on 13. well like most entrepreneurs you kind of just fall into being an entrepreneur i had started other businesses uh, but right before we on wheels i got laid off so knowing i i've only done sales that's the only type of job i've ever had is sales and so i've always liked the recruitment side of sales is what it is and just jumped in i mean i knew i have truck drivers that are family and friends, but basically just jumped in. But just throughout my career, I've done a, been in other male-dominated industries, so it wasn't foreign to me. So you had a little bit of, you had a little, you understood a little bit of trucking, right? Because of family yeah, and, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had so. a little knowledge um, of it just from, like I said, family and friends. Well, and I'll tell you, once you get in, it's it's addictive. Um, uh, yeah, so tell me, what between. when you start when you started your industry? I mean, when you started your job and you started your company, what kind of obstacles did you did you encounter right away? I mean, sure. Back then, you didn't have. I mean, obviously, you had one line, but it wasn't all of the support that the gals and girls have now that are getting into the industry, and it definitely wasn't all of the education. So it would be reading the most boring books you can ever think of and then taking that with my sales skills that I had and making my own training program. It's kind of how it was. So it, it, the biggest obstacle was the inside knowledge more than just on the driver side, right? But on the collar side, um, actually knowing information and making a lot of mistakes and you have one term that means three and four different things in the same industry so that was that's probably the biggest obstacle did you um when you started doing this and i and i'm just get, did it when you started rig on wheels first of all how'd you get your name my mama i am not creative, <laughs> I'm not creative on my body. i mean i know what i like to see but that's it um uh, my mama i said mama I need a name for my business. This is what the business is. Can you get it to me in 10 minutes? Did you, you said something about um, your training. You developed a training. What is that? You know, what, what, are you, what are we talking about? Your training. Yeah, so I and, and have been perfecting it and helping other recruiters as well over the time. But a training on how to start being a truck driving recruiter, first of all. Right. right. It's different than any other recruitment that I've done. And I've recruited in a lot of different fields. 
So it's totally different. Um, that so just being a recruiter, and now I have a training on how to start your own recruitment agents. Oh, now you're getting other people out there doing what you're doing. Yeah, because you once you know how to be a recruiter, that's one thing. But then starting your own agency and having other recruiters with you and hiring staff and support staff and all of that, now you're getting into something that's um, it's totally different. So when you talk to the drivers and you get a hold of the drivers and you're and you're starting to recruit them and you're bringing them on board and you're trying to work to get them uh, slotted in, how do you strategize with those drivers? Well, the first thing I want to know is what is I know what you're calling me for. I know what you sent your resume in on or your text message, but what is it that you want? So if for your next job, what is your ideal job? That's what you want to know. Home time a lot. In and back home at daily, home on the weekends, that kind of stuff. I don't want to run the mountains, or I don't want to run that kind of those kinds of questions. Those kinds. Of, we hear that all, and that's fine. Okay, Jimmy. So tell me, if we had to pick one of those things that was a non-negotiable, what is that? Oh, I got you. I like that. You want to get it down to that one thing that'll make them say, "This job is for me," because. Drivers don't have a lot of time, and recruiters show don't have a lot of time either, right? So right. you need to nail that down. Then you can branch out. You need to know somebody's non-negotiable. Um, you know, so and and here's a real quick question that I got here, and I'm trying to, and I, and I want to understand it. What does the road typically look like for a felon when working for, or uh, trying to get? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, because I I do. Um, I have a video on YouTube, I think it's a year or two old, and it still gets a whole lot of traction. Does it? And I think that every felon in America that calls a Texas um, behind it. But depending on what the felony was, right. when it was, just we'll talk about what we can do. And I don't go off of, can I place the driver? Can rig on wheels place the driver? Literally, what does it look like for you? So trying to strategize with them to make it make sense for them. Right. It doesn't matter. I haven't heard of, I've heard a lot of different felons. Okay? Right, I'm sure. And my patient is very creative in all of felons. But typically, there is a place for them, but it's how they get to that place. I understand. I, and you know, they're, yeah, and you know what? I, I'm pretty sure that the reason it got a lot of hits is because there's a lot of interest and in, in, in questions, right? I mean, you're talking about a video that's been out for a long time and, and you're hitting a niche that probably people are avoiding. And, and, I think, and I think you're being honest about it, right? I think you're hitting it head on. Yeah, there is people there that, that in this industry, it, it may, they need to be placed. And, yeah, and they need to be placed, and it may not be your traditional truck driving situation. It could right, be I got you. More on the force, they're cleaning tanks, and oh, by the way, they had a CDL, so they're able to move around trucks. I don't like, preferably, I don't like the idea of just because you have your CDL, you have to get in the 18-wheeler and be gone two or three weeks. It depends on what works for you and what is needed. So it's a lot of different things we can do with a CDL in our industry. Absolutely, 100%. In fact, it's growing by the numbers mm -hmm. across the board. And as we get closer and closer to more what I would call last mile delivery, you're going to need, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need more and more of those local. You're going to need more of those people that work um, for just, you know, a company or whatever to move equipment, move trucks, move trailers, even on yards. Um, I mean, I think it's just changing. These warehouses need people that have a, understand the skill necessary in order to drive a truck. What is the significance of the 13th month in your industry? I What a great question. Yeah, I'm so big on employee retention. Employee retention is huge for me. So this whole driver shortage and the retention, and I, it's not rocket science. It, it's just really not, okay? But you know in most industries, not just trucking, just across the board. If you can keep somebody in that industry for 13 months, they're lifer. That's what they're gonna do. 
in some shape or form, that's what they're going to do. The six months or something like that. So my goal is to keep our drivers in the industry for 13 months. Yeah, I get another hurdle after that. But once you get to that 13th month, I got you. That's a lot of things start clicking. It's kind of the the number that matters once you hit it, and then you most of those will stay. They're not as transient as the ones that are three months, four months, and then bounce around. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not just talking about in as a carrier. <coughs> Our issue as an industry, right? Are the guys are not wanting to stay in the industry. They can't right. stay out of carry if they're not in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what my or bring them back to the industry, right? Because we got a lot of CDL holders. They may not want to drive anymore. Right. Right. I, I think you I think you hit on a great point. You know, recruiting um, is a is a very important aspect, but the more you can retain, the more people you can retain, the less you have to recruit. Uh, and, and it makes it a little bit easier, and the stress isn't on about bringing on new people. It's more about holding on to what you have a little bit and, and making sure that we work around, work through some of these problems. I think sometimes, don't you agree, that sometimes we just forget um, it's just a conversation? I mean, can't we just talk about it for a minute and you figure know, out? It's, it's literally just a conversation, and it's an upfront, intense conversation. I'm an intense person, right? I'm intense about whatever I do, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's cooking, it, it doesn't matter. I am extremely intense, right? But okay. it's about having honest conversations. And I right. always say this, I'm very fair. I'm gonna tell you what it is. You may not like it, but you'll know what it is. Well, the drivers and the carriers want that same respect. I always say it's not just on the drivers, right? The carriers are not always done they're not treated fairly either, the truck driver, uh, the right. trucking company. Right. And I, it's a two way street. But if the drivers will have a candid conversation and then the companies have one going back, that is right there. That's where we're going to make a difference. So here it is, and, and I'm getting right down to it. So you're honestly talking about building relationships and communicating well between these two people. I mean, really. I think, I mean, you're, it's not rocket science, is it? We're talking about building good relationships between these two, between drivers and carriers and understanding that, I, you know, and, and here, I, and I'm just going to tell you, Camille, I drove for a long time, Dale's driven. Um, it, it matters what, you know, sometimes you just want to be heard. And, and I feel like, I feel like sometimes you, you don't hear what's coming out because you've heard it before, right? And you heard it before. But when it's coming from me from the first time, I want you to hear what I have to say, and it and it is important because I mean it's important, and and I think I think you're bringing up a great missed missed problem is that we we fail to recognize how important these relationships are and how important it is to just listen sometimes, and and yeah, I it's it's really just it. It's a simple thing, but it's hard because it's human nature. Because we always want to be right, you know. That's just well, I know I always. Want to be right. My wife is. My <laughs> I mean, what woman is not always right? Let's just be honest here. But at the same, literally, at the same time, if we want a common goal, it it, it goes. I always say this: go back to what your mama told you. You know, right. like treat people correctly. And then when you and your siblings will go head to head, right? Like yeah. really partner, she sat you all down and you all are gonna talk it out. It's not that it's just gonna be peaches and cream. However, you're talking out the situation. That's what we're doing. We're talking at a driver and the driver is talking at a company. Talk to each other. If a company wants to know what a driver feels, as a driver. It's yeah, you know, I, I find it that, in, and here it is, and you're, in a, you're a third party to a company, to a carrier, right? How important is that you, you, you get that carrier to, because what it sounds like, you're not just bringing drivers on, it sounds like you're working intensely with the carrier, and you're working intensely with the driver, and y'all two, and you're sitting down at the table with them and say, okay, what? let's... <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's talk. I mean, right? You're not, and you're not, it doesn't sound like you're, and it doesn't sound like you're stopping after day one, like after the introduction. It sounds like you're, this is an ongoing process. Yeah, because we we try to be their recruiter for life. When we put Jimmy on with a company, we want to be Jimmy's recruiter for life. Right. We're not just trying to be a one hitter or whatever it's called. I'm not good with saying, so I'm going to mess it up. But we're not trying to be that. And we want Jimmy to also tell Dale and Dave and Timmy and everybody so we can try to help them out as well. Right. That That's what it is. Yeah, that's cool. And, and then here it says, how do you make drivers more marketable when you meet them? How do you make them that, yeah, how do you make Dave, when you, when I call you and say, hey, look, I need a job. What is it, how do you make me more marketable for the for the carrier? I literally, I'm, okay, this is what how I train my recruiting staff and everybody. Come on, let's get it. Listen here, Dave. What is it that you want to do? And then you're going to go all over. No, no, no. Stop. What is it that you want to do? Not what social media told you. Not what your old lady told you. I want to hear none of that. What is it that you want to do? Right. Then once he says that, we talk about a plan. I'm real good at telling the drivers they need to be bulletproof. You need to have all your endorsements in your tweet card. Absolutely. I always talk about a time that I was recruiting for a company. Everything was wonderful. All these drivers set up for orientation. Then the dedicated account for that company came back saying every driver needed to have their hazmat and tweet card. Thursday before their orientation on Monday. <laughs> All of those drivers had already quit their job, right? Oh, my goodness. So it was the ones that had that. Those stories are not abnormal because things change in logistics. What we saw at 9 a.m. is totally different at 11, and the pandemic oh. taught us that, right? Absolutely. And that was just beyond ridiculous those during that time. But that's what happens. And so if this is what you want to do, these are the steps to do that. Then we get to, is it really what they want to do? Because if it's something you want to do, you go after that. So that's how I am. If you want to be marketable for a carrier, you need to be bulletproof. You need to have everything. And I don't want to hear that you haven't used your hazmat in 10 years, because what about you going to use it tomorrow? You don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And if you're a driver, do what professional drivers do, and that's be bulletproof. How has... Um, how, how has... And, and I'm just gonna. How has it been difficult for you? Um, in 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 and it, has it changed dramatically? I don't mean difficult, but hasn't it changed dramatically in the industry with women over the last 12 years that you've seen? I mean, I want to get yeah. right back to you. It's I want to get more, right back to you. Uh, do yeah, what? Yeah, it's, it's more of us in it, and I'm definitely happy to see that. Um, next paragraph. You have to know that this is a male industry. So don't ever forget that. I don't care how many of us are coming into the industry. This is a male driven industry and we have to try to think of how we can communicate better with men. Right. I I okay. want to believe I want to believe that women like you um, and with what you're doing in the industry will change that mindset forever. Um, I, I want this to be an inclusive industry. I want it to be inclusive for all because I think for us to be successful, I think it's going to be necessary to have genuine talent uh, and uh, charisma. And I, I think it's going to be necessary if we're going to move into the future, we're going to need all comers, all talent, all, all smart, talented people to come in here and make a difference. I think that I think that that's wonderful, and I think that that's the goal, and I think that has I'm not going to say it's been a goal, but it definitely is a goal for me. But I, I'm also very realistic. In order for us to have the talent and to bring what's necessary into the industry, we have to learn how to communicate with the people that are already in the industry. I understand that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah 
you we do need everybody so it can be inclusive because that's how we make things better people coming from different walks of life and look different and all of those different things but at the same time the majority that's in here we have to learn how to communicate so they can listen to us if i'm trying to get dale to listen to me yeah dale. To, yeah i'm listening now yeah you listen <laughs> dale all right i've got him understand what he's thinking and go from there as women we've been doing that our whole life we've been conditioned <laughs> to do that so that part is not going to be as hard for women um, it, it's it's what we do so well we i'll tell you what we all have to do it with a different hat that's all so let me ask you a question. If you want, people want to get a hold of you at uh, Rig on Wheels, um, how do they do that? What's the best way to communicate to you or your company, whether they want a job, whether they want to communicate with you? What's the best way? Well, our telephone number is 281-968-3100. My extension is one. And then you have about 80, eight other extensions after that to be able to get in contact. And then my personal email is camille at rigonwheels.com. Camille at rigonwheels.com. Awesome. And, 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 all social media. And, and you are on social media. Well, we, yeah. we hoped, yeah, and we hope that you promote uh, us as well on some of your social media out there because <laughs> it sounds like you're doing a fantastic job and you're communicating well already. Um, do me a favor before you go, we ask every one of our, our guests on the air to say their name and who they work for and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Can you do that? Yes, Camille Gaines, Rig on Wheels, and I am on BCB Live, the safest radio station in the nation. Thank you very thank you. much, young lady. Hey, have a great and wonderful day, and we thank you for coming thank on. You. Thank you, thank you for having me. All right, hey man, awesome interview. She knows what she's doing, yep. kind, of, kind of scary out there, fantastic stuff. Uh, that she is making it happen, and we just got to stand out of the way. We got to get either <laughs> either get on board or get run over. That, that's right. And then it, it was so interesting listening to her talk about communications, listening, not just listening, but hearing what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not just yeah. I think it's a very very important. And and I'll tell you what, fantastic. I, when we come right back, we will talk. You can talk a little bit about weather. Weather. All right, look at that. We'll be back in just a second on BCB Live. The safest station in the nation.